Okay, I haven't created a layout in God knows how long. It's really due that I should maybe create a layout. I actually miss it. I miss creating layouts. It was just oh, something that I did for so many years. And I've been doing so many other things that I haven't done these. And I printed a couple pictures from my phone. These are beautiful pictures taken by my friend Nunu Box. Meraki Spirit, uh, she goes by different names and uh, she's just so talented and her pictures are amazing and I just thought, wow, okay, I'll have to use those for one of my layouts and I'm using 49 and Market Captured Adventures, which is a brand new collection, is available on sale at scrapbook.com, which is great. Oh, and also I think at Joggles, I'll link everything below as always. I'll link also to my sprocket. This gives you two by three pictures, which is amazing because like you can like embellish the papers so well with them. And between these two, I think I'm going to, I'm trying to decide which one I want to use. I think I will use this one here and then I will use this one for another. I can't really make a decision. It's like... Maybe, let, maybe I'll look at the papers and I'll decide. So anyway, so I'm going to put the, this aside. And this is just such a beautiful collection. It's perfect for what I love. Look at this. It has beautiful, beautiful designs. So let me just see if I find something that really... Like you see, this would look amazing on this one. So this is how... Just to explain a little bit about the process of how I do this. I really like this one with this. So this is, would be good. This one is nice as well. So this is the process of choosing. I try to like kind of match the colors as much as I can. But look at this. This would look so good over here. I don't know now. Maybe I should make two layouts. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, so these two I like. Let's see if there's anything else that would look good. This would probably look good as well here. No, I like it better on this one. So... Look at the designs. They're just adventurous. Actually, maybe this would look this would look good because it's kind of I think it's a picture of some kind of glacier thing. The colors don't match as much, so never mind. This is nice as well, but not for this one. This looks amazing as well. Wow, this is so cool. I love this. But I still am going with the other one. I don't know. Oh, this is perfect. There's some, let me see the other side. Oh, okay, perfect. So these I'm going to use to kind of frame things. Amazing. Good. Picture perfect. Good. So I have stuff to do. And let me see what's the last page here. Oh, also like for like this is so I can use like titles from over here. So perfect. So I have more or less what I want to do. Now I just have to decide if I want to do the bird or the glacier thing. I'm almost thinking, let's see, let's see. I don't know what to decide, I think. I think I'm going to do the glacier. No, the bird, the bird, the bird. I'm going to do the bird. I'm so funny, but I just, like, I'll do the glacier one another time. So I'm going to do the bird today. And the first thing I want to do is add some texture to the background. So I'm going to put the photo aside, and I'm going to add some texture. So that will be my next step. Okay, so I changed my mind again, and I am going with this paper with the glacier photo because I wanted to do some other technique, and this matches better with that. So I'm going to put the photo aside, and I'm going to bring out, I'm bringing out some Distress Oxide inks. This is the Hickory Smoke and the Iced Spruce. And because I, I wanted to pick grayish colors for the technique so I could create a really cool background and kind of match up what I already have here. So I'm going to start with the uh, hickory smoke and I'm going to add it to this uh, stamping block. And then, so with my spray bottle, I'm just going to spray this a little bit and then literally stamp with it on my background. I'm going to do this again. And you can even let it, let it drip a little bit on the background. Okay, now it looks like a big mess. But once you set it and dry it, which I'm going to do, and add more layers, it will start looking like 
more exciting for you guys. So I love this dripping technique and I'm going to, the stamping technique I meant to say, and I'm going to add now a little bit of a different color. This is the ice spruce. And I'm layering on top of the other. Again, I might even bring in a little bit of blue into this. Let's see. I'll go check to see if I have any other colors. So again, it's the nice thing about the Distress Oxide inks is that you need to layer them and it's a good thing to dry them in between. So that way you get those beautiful layers. I think I might introduce even a little bit of brown into this. Let's see, a little bit more of this. And maybe over here. And let's do a little bit of this one. So what I like is kind of building these layers you could do this straight on the page. Another option is doing it on your mat, which is a good idea as well. But as you're building, you'll see the colors kind of come through. And you see how quickly they dry, which is really nice. You don't have to fully dry it all. You just go ahead and just create texture here. I'm going to put some on this area here. love that okay and a little bit more of the ice spruce let's see where else and it becomes also darker which is really nice so it becomes a big mess but that's the look I'm going for I want to have that messy look because it kind of reminds me of the photo it actually looks like the icebergs, not the ice, yeah, the icebergs, the, the glaciers. So it kind of that, but I think I might bring some of that color, that orangey color. Let me go get another color. Okay, I'm bringing the tattered rose and I want to experiment with it, but I am not sure if how it will look, right? So what I want to do while I'm drawing and explain this. I know that more that my layout more or less is going to be around here, like the photo itself. So I can basically test it right underneath and I know it will not show if I don't like the results. So if I like the results, perfect, then it's not a problem. I kind of wanted to bring kind of that rosy feeling, feeling an orangey, rosy, I'm not really sure. So this is a great way you experiment, you experiment in an area where you know that it might be covered if you don't get it right. If you don't want to experiment there, then you, all you have to do is just experiment on a piece of paper on the side or something like that. But that's a good way of doing it and then realizing whether or not you like it, which I do. Perfect. So now I can go everywhere. And the nice thing about these, you could also remove some of it. So that's okay as well. And um, it's a very light color. So some of it will probably get lost but you just want to add a little bit of these highlights of pink so i might have to add a quite a few layers of this to get to be able to get that nice um pink area and if you don't like something let's say it went too far and you don't like how it looks like i went here you can just wipe it off a little bit it should come off but i just want to kind of create some more of this it's kind of seeping in it's not letting me do as much of the pink as I want it I really want let me try to add a lot of pigment on this one and see what happens and less water so it will be the less water you add the more pigment it it has so yeah that's good much better I'm gonna add a oops sorry I'm dropping everything So, um, going 
to add some more here. Yeah, I really like this. Now, another thing I want to add, I brought also the vintage photo. I think I want to add a little bit of it, just a tiny bit. Let's see how it works. I'm going to experiment with it again in the middle. And if I don't like it, I don't have to do it. I think it will bring a little bit of that yellowish tinge, just a little bit. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. So... I didn't add it that much and you can you can wipe off what you don't like but it's kind of reminds me of this background a lot so I really like that yeah it kind of reminds me of the stones sometimes I don't know what it is about my layouts that I usually try to mimic the picture I've done this a lot a lot of people comment that about my layouts that I try to mimic the picture I kind of like bringing people people into the layout to feel as if they were actually in the place where the photo was taken so I've done like forest themed and also beach themed beach themes is one of my favorites but I really didn't have any like travel ones that would match except for beach themed ones I didn't really have any photos that were would travel match this so I was really excited when Nuneka uh, let me use her pictures because it's really important to ask permission from the person that took the photo unless it's your own photos it's really important to ask the permission for, from the photographer especially if you're taking them from an, an online source okay let me heat set this i would love to add a little bit more pink into this and add more layers. I don't know if it will work. Let's try, let's try, let's try. I will try. Okay. I'm add a little bit of pink. You kind of see the little pink. It's hard to see it in the picture, but you kind of see the pink when you when you look at it personally here in front of you. But it's hard to see the pink when when it's online oh there now you'll see it more right yes 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 let me try a little bit more i love layering distress oxidings really really love layering them so i just think it looks so amazing to do it yeah wow that looks so good i love that really really love that I love Janine's designs. She's the one who creates the 49 and Market papers, and she's just brilliant. She really makes beautiful, beautiful papers. So I really, really like this. It kind of makes it look marbleized, that gray and the and the pink together, the tattered rose. It makes it look like a marble, and I love that. I should try that technique in a journal. I might I might have to okay so that's good so now what i'm going to be doing i want to add some more layers of course because why we can't stop right here on this layer and i'm just going to dry this a little bit more to make sure it's dry and then i'm going to bring in some stamps and i have a few stamps that i wanted to bring i can't decide which ones i want to use these are stamps from 49 and market they look really, really awesome. I want this, but I'm thinking to go with, this one is the Captured Adventures, these two. This is a different one. This is from Gabby Pollock, which she designs beautiful designs. But I think I might not use this one. I think I'm gonna use the actual stamps that come with the Captured Adventures. And I might start with this one. I love making designs this way. So I'm going to use the same colors I've already used. So I'm gonna start with the Hickory Smoke. And I'm going to make some lines with it. So this is a great way. Stamping is a great way of adding layers to your layouts. Okay. And I usually don't use a stamp block. I don't think I'm going to use a stamp block for this one, but you can. I like using my hands because that way, not only do I have more control, but I also don't have to, you don't get to, you don't have to get the full image that way. So you get 
partial image and it looks distressed if you know what I mean like it looks like it's not fully there and you do want that distress I mean I love the distressed look you don't have to do the distressed look but I love doing them so you get the distressed look in some areas and some areas are not so I just use my fingers you don't have to you could just go ahead and stamp everything straight and that's okay as well I just love distress look and I might even switch this around to get the ends of this okay 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 so there I have some of this then I want to use hold on these arrows but maybe with a different color so I will use the arrows these are like chevrons and I try to incorpor incorporate the same, basically the same colors. So I'm going to incorporate these and create more texture. I might actually also go, did I just use the same one? Oh, okay. I just realized I put these in the wrong thing. So I could actually use the ice spruce first. And now I'm using the hickory smoke. Great, great. Always put the lids where they're supposed to go. Now I'm going in the opposite direction a little bit as well. It really helps kind of center everything around the photo. So I know the photo is kind of going here. So I create lines going in the opposite direction here and also going up and down. That way it centers everything. And I don't know if you can see this well. Let me just and it's usually good to put about three lines. I find the three lines kind of really help the odd number of balance. So you, if you want to have a balanced layout, you need to have about three things, almost like a triangle. But in this case, odd numbers always help center everything. So as you can see, I am going, I'm putting this in and I'm trying to press as much as I can because the ink of the distressed oxide ink is really strong. It's beautiful in that sense. And it's really pigmented, which is amazing. Again, I'm just putting the wrong lids. Wait, and I'm so confused which one is which. Let's look at the, this is ice spruce. Oh no, so maybe I did not make a mistake. I don't know, don't mind me. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of the, of the vintage photo. I might add this arrow now instead and you see I'm just using it with my fingers and just adding some more texture it really helps and this is just basically building the background it's really easy to do and if you can't stamp like this I can even turn this around if you can't stamp like I'm doing just use a stamp block it's not a big deal right it's it's all a matter of of whatever is comfortable for you and I did not uh, prime my paper. You could prime if you want your paper with some gesso, with clear gesso, so that way you don't lose anything. I did not prime it. I find that it's really easy to just um, do this directly on a paper, especially the distressed oxide inks, they go on perfectly. Now I'm gonna take this one, the brown one, the vintage photo. I think it will look really cool with the vintage photo. Okay, there you go. You see how I get like I'm getting these writings. And then the reason why I don't want to use the whole design is because I want it to look tattered. I want it to look as if it's like that part of the design and it's not like stamped perfectly. I don't like perfect stamping. I mean, unless it's for like cards or something like that, then I do want. I've always had a hard time with doing perfect stamping images. So that's the only thing that I, I kind of don't like. You see, I'm not a perfect stamper by all means at all. Okay. Let me just do this. So this is kind of really framing things up. You see, I have the movement going up, movement going down, and it's all going to center in the middle. So this is a beautiful, beautiful stamp. 
stamp set i meant to say so, so now we have the background i'm going to heat set this because it's a little bit still damp i'm going to heat set this and i'm going to come back with all the other elements that i want to add okay so this is a beautiful laser cut shapes that come with the actual set of captured adventures i think it comes with a set i'm not sure if it's a separate link i will link this one separately anyways and i wanted to frame the picture so i thought to use this this frame over here i actually wasn't sure if to use like kind of like this postage stamp but i think i will use this one because it fits better so i'm excited to use this so that's one element i'm going to do i think i will take this little ticket stub here because that looks good as well so this ticket stub is good this ticket stub is good and what else i need some more layers i find that this is not enough so i'm going to grab a couple of another one of the papers and i might actually add some layers with it okay so i'm thinking that i would love to use some of these layers that are here oh and there's some darker layers too i could use black let's see what other things is available here this is a really nice paper as well and let's see the back the back is plain so i could use this and just cut some layers let's see if it would look good right like if i could just put this underneath yeah so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use my trimmer or even not my trimmer i might actually just rip things i love ripping paper if you don't if you're too scared to rip paper then don't worry you don't have to then just go ahead and cut it out but i really like doing that let's see i think i think this would look really good if i could cut it the right way so okay so you don't want i don't want to cover too much of my design just because i did work really hard on the background but I do love this part of it. Hold on. Let's let's cut this into like smaller pieces. So, yeah. But now that you I see this design, I'm thinking to myself, "Oh, okay, it's not tattered enough." So, what you do is you actually you can turn this here. This is good. Oh, I love that. Okay, good. And then this one could go hmm I don't know I need to kind of make this as well okay maybe like this because you're covering the center this is really good yeah I might not even need no, I'm kind of missing this really good area okay so this looks too perfect and i need to tatter this so i'm going to put the layout aside and i'm going to take the same colors that i had already used but this time i'll do a little bit different i'm going to put them on my desk and i'm going to just basically dunk the papers inside of them so this is another great technique to do that you could do this directly with the layout if you want because you want this to look tattered you don't want this to look like a perfect page oops sorry so in that sense it's easier and i might not use all these papers but i can always save them for a different time i'm going to use the ice spruce now and i could even go and stamp these after but they kind of have just really nice elements on them so you don't really have to if you don't want to you see how they become a little bit more tattered 
and you can continue doing layers of the different colors and I don't want too much of the brown right so I just want to a little bit of it that looks really good yay I love it so I love tattering things I love making things distressed and I want to use the pink one as well the tattered rose so let's add this one as well now all these papers are going to match the designs that I had already done with the other paper with the background so this is perfect you see so now I have three pieces that are tattered that match the rest of the layout and I could if I want to as I said let me just clean my background my mat and this is a great mat I have to say I always link my mat this is the Ken Oliver mat and I always love this mat because it cleans so easily and it's so easy to use so just pointing that out as well okay so now I have these papers that kind of match the background but have a lot more designs on them which are really really cool okay and this one oh I like that there we go actually it looks like the I don't know the map of the United States almost funny enough okay and then I can put this on top perfect and see I can you can rip and I actually am like sad that I didn't tatter these tickets which I might have to again I might have to tatter these tickets too I know it's a it's a lot more work but you know what it looks so much better when when it's done so if you can just basically sink everything into the into the ink if you can then just do it it's worth it it's just worth it let me do a little bit of brown I might not do all of it just because it's just a few little elements there we go uh -huh. there we go now it looks a little bit more right I may, might even do the frame a little bit hold on just a little bit to kind of match it to everything else okay good now let me clean the background so I can place my layout again and you should dry these I'm just not being very careful with this but you can dry these which I, actually maybe I will maybe I will dry all these elements a little bit and I'll be back to basically assemble the layout okay so I dry this up a little bit and then I'm going to glue these and I want to use a little bit of foam tape if you don't have foam tape then you can use cardboard paper cardboard from a box and just layer things underneath that works just as well so this is just give this a little bit of layer it's still a little bit damp but oh well I buy this tape in bulk basically there's that one I could stamp this a little bit also with the brown I might do that add a little bit of stamping and what I like about this is that I mean obviously I'm covering some of the areas but some of the designs kind of stay which is really nice now I love keeping this the way it is but 49 in market really has beautiful beautiful flowers so I am definitely going to use some flowers to embellish but first I just want to get the actual no I like the other way around this done so then I have the I really have it done I have the layout done the composition that way I don't have to worry about it and I'm cutting these into little pieces so I could add around you can buy thin ones as well but I don't have any at the moment so I'm going with what I have okay so this is 
the layout, the composition. I am going to add a little bit of other things, other little things here, just to kind of stick them and create more texture. So there is one. This one also needs so these little tickets. I really like these tickets. Yeah, it looks good. And let's see where I add the other ticket. So I want to add another ticket. Yeah, I like that like that. And let's see. Here just to hide kind of this area here. So that's good. And I'm looking at here something here. I, I want to add some more things here. So you see this. This is uh, also some cutouts. I am looking at this clock. Now I want it. Let's see if it matches up and if we could fit it into here. Oh, there's a smaller one too. That would look really good. That would look really good. Let's see. I might have to cut the clock. Oh, there, if it goes here, it's perfect. And I'm going to get the other clock as well. So it looks really nice here. There's another little clock there in the corner. I'm going to get it as well. Oh, there's, is this a double sheet? Oh, wow, guys, I don't even, didn't even know this. Look how much beautiful stuff there is underneath here. Oh, there's more clocks. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. All right. Well, I have two, which is what I wanted. And I'm going to add, this looks really good here. Perfect. Just turn it around so the clock is going the right way. So I'm really excited about these. Wow, okay. So as you can see, I just love layering things. And now I'm gonna get some, pick of some of these, look at these. These are the perfect matching flowers. These are called Botanical Blends. It's the shadow color. And I'm going to add some of these just because it adds even more texture and it matches perfectly literally with the brown and everything okay and I might actually put a little bit of, of the distress on it as well so these look good like this Hold on, I have to cut these. Oops. These little flowers look perfect. And I'm going to cut them to add them in different places. And then I'll glue them after. I just play around with where I think they should go. No. Okay, good, that's good. These are really nice as well. I might have to cut some of these, okay. I'm not adding the leaves. The leaves are, these green leaves don't really match my layout, so I'm not adding those. But I love adding the layers, you know what I mean? Like these, these are great. And look at these coils. These are great as well. So you could use the ones that you have left over to coil them, although these come with coils already. But, oops, it's too long and it's not fitting. There we go. So I love these, like they have like these little cute coils. And you can make your own as well with the leftover coils from the ones you're cutting. So it's great that way as well.
I also brought in some medals. I thought this one would look good, this adventure one over here. This is the Junkyard Findings from Prima. Yeah. How cool is that? It says adventure. So when I do a layout, I usually try to, to do this behind the scenes. But I don't. So awesome. Let's see. There's some words here I could use. Awesome. Love. Knows no distance. In the moment. Wonderless. We are here. I think we are here oh. is good. Adventure. Or no, maybe just awesome. But I don't want to rip the, pa the paper. So I'm just going to write the word awesome adventure. I think that's good. So I'm just basically cutting this around. Okay, and this can go here. Awesome adventure. Perfect. Now, what I want to do is that I am going to add some of this distressed look to my other embellishments. I think it's important to do that as well to kind of make it match everything. So because they're already this color, I might just go just with the brown. Okay, so here I'm doing it on the side. And just kind of dip these flowers a little bit to kind of distress them. You see how it distresses them? I think it's important to distress your everything, basically. Especially if your layout is a distressed kind of layout, a distressed looking layout. Um, So I am just doing these, I mean just the flowers, and I might just do also this title. It looks too perfect. There we go. <laughs> the title, you just want to kind of distress it a little bit, and that works perfectly fine. And then all I'm going to do is just glue everything. So I'm taking some Fabri-Tac glue and just put some glue behind, and that's great because it actually, so this glue really holds things well, which is great for these type of heavy layouts i might just actually use glue as well on this title and i'm even going to glue these it's hard to glue these little things especially if they're wires and stuff like that this as well this will hold this well and it's the glue is transparent so it's okay it will hold this also. Oops. Maybe if I put it under the clock. Hold on. There. That's better. Okay. And and what I do to glue these, I just put glue at the end and stick them in, and hope for the best, and hope that they glue each other to glue, they glue to each other okay okay now let me go back to these flowers i can't even remember where i had them so if you can't remember where you put things take a picture of it before you destroy the layout before you dismantle the layout i meant to say that way you know exactly where it goes and you don't have to worry about putting it in a different place. So there, like basically that's the layout. And I might, you can even go back and add a little bit more stamping. So for example, let's say I didn't have, I feel like I want some more stamping. I can go and add more stamping, especially this one. This is a great one with the brown. So if there's any place that you're missing stamps, like here, for example, I can do some on the frame carefully, right, obviously, and some of that. So it kind of ties it all in. If, if you don't have, even on the clock a little bit, that will look good. You could even stamp on the flowers. I mean, everything works. Okay, the only thing I wanted to add was like a clip. 
some wooden clip, paper clip. I wasn't sure. I went back to my stash to see if I could find any clips that would match. This one is really big, but let's see if it looks good on it. I really wanted to like make a look. I think it's too big. This is wet. But uh, it looks cool as if it was a note. Let me see if I can. F oh, this is one a good one. This is a smaller one and it's gray. Let's see. This is our. That looks cute like that. There we go. I really, really like this. So that's really, really nice to just have it all distressed. And this is basically my final layout. And it's just beautiful 49 in market products. A couple of Prima products, but most of these 49 in market. Oh, and the Distressed Oxide inks from Tim Holtz. And I'm just going to take a picture of it. And this is it. Thanks so much. If you like my, my video, please give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends on social media. If you think that you created something with these with inspired by me please go ahead and share it with me i would love to see it even if you don't want to share it in public feel free to message me on facebook and subscribe to my channel thank you so so much and have an amazing day bye <music>